Hello, my name is Doug Wilson. I'm here today to show you some basic ways to use the interactive version of OS Query to ask questions of your system using SQL. This demonstration assumes an extremely basic knowledge of system administration and SQL, and that you already have OS Query installed on your system. As a reference, OS Query uses a SQLite syntax for SQL. If you have questions or things for SQL syntax outside of what's included in the OS Query documentation, I recommend SQLite.org as a great reference tool. So we're going to start off here today by launching OS Query Interactive or OS Query I using sudo. So you may ask why I did this. OS Query runs in a user context. If your user context is a normal user and you attempt to query some of the system databases that have access to sensitive information, you may not get this because OS Query respects the user context and permissions it's running in. So if you run OS Query I in an elevated mode, uh, you have access to all of the system tables. Obviously, this comes with the ability to view sensitive information, so use this as you would any other case of elevating your commands. Uh, so now I'm in OS Query. Uh, if you haven't seen OS Query before, the interactive mode uh, is a simple command shell that supports a bunch of SQL queries and some help commands. So I'm going to start off with the OS Query equivalent of Hello World. I'm going to query the uptime of the machine. We can see that my computer has been rebooted a little over two days now. Uh, so some other interesting things you can do. There are a lot of tables in OS Query. We're only going to cover a few for purpose of illustration. Uh, but why I'm doing this is to sort of get you thinking about how you can tackle problems in OS Query. Uh, so there are a lot of users on your average OS X slash Mac OS computer. Uh, so let's look at some of those. Now this is interesting because there is no actual simple users command in Mac OS. You can look at the users in the UI, you can parse the password file, but there's not just a simple way to say, hey, let me see the list of users like there is in Windows. This is actually kind of cool. And as I said, there's a lot of them. So I'm going to put a limit on this query and just, just pull up the first five. Hey, look, that's a bunch of information. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to find using OS Query is that there are a lot of pieces of information that you don't necessarily need. And one of the great things about SQL is you can refine your query so you're looking at only the stuff that you want to look at. Um, you can also use SQL operators to give you other pieces of information. So instead of having to like scroll this all out and count, I want to find out how many users are on my system. So I can do a count function. Hey, I have 101 users on my screen, my system. That would fill up a lot of screens of information. Another thing that OS Query Interactive does is it does support a command history. So if I hit the up arrow, uh, we can see the previous command. It also supports multi-line statements. When I'm doing this for personal use, I don't usually use multi-line statements. So when I do the command history, I get my entire command back. But I am going to show some commands today using the multi-line format. Uh, a, you can cut and paste SQL commands from a text editor that way that have multi-line stuff and they still work. But also, it's better for clarity if you're showing stuff off. Um, so let's clean up this user table a little bit by selecting only some of the columns. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to select this from users and I'm put that limit on them again. And here it's going to basically pull five users up. You're going to say, hey, wait, why aren't those ordered by user ID? Uh, well, I didn't actually instruct any sort of ordering here, and the columns would normally be pulled up by SQL uh, in terms of alphabetical order. So this is actually ordered by the description column right now. Uh, you could change that, though, and order it by the UID, the GID, or any of the other facets here. Um, let's uh, this, I'm going to type this in on one line for ease of sake and re repetition. But so I know I've got 101 users on here. I can see that some of them are service accounts or daemons. Let's look at all the ones that are daemons. So again, I'm going to do what I did, but on one line this time uh, with a where clause. Okay, that's basically the command I had before, but I'm going to add in where description. And so you can do equals for exact matches, but you can also do like 
which is a very useful SQL command that allows you to do partial matches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say word description like, and I'm going to start my phrase I'm looking for, and do percent sign, daemon percent sign, and then close it. And so what I'm doing here is, uh, and you can look this up on the SQL 8 documentation, but percent is basically saying if there's anything before the phrase daemon and anything after, it should match. And this is also not case sensitive. So I'm going to close my statement and enter it. And hey, look, I have a message. I have a uh, example of all of the description daemon. And so, you know, we're not trying to do anything forensically sound here. We just want to look at the stuff that Apple has labeled a daemon or service account. And we have a listing of all those accounts now. All right, so let's look at some of the other tables that we've got here. Um, so let's, let's say I want to see what processes are running on the machine. So I'm going to look at the processes table. And you can bet that this is going to be a very normal table. So I'm going to start off just by limiting it to one to show what it is that we've got here. Again, that's a ton of information. Um, so but it's basically about the sort of same thing you would see if you did a PS command with a couple of command switches. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how we can take some of this information and not just clean up this table, but we could join it with things. So right now, with the processes, uh, you can see if you look at all the things that I've got there, I've got the process ID, I've got the name, and you can also see if I go to the users table, um, I've basically got a user ID, and hey, look, I've got that UID down here too in processes. So I can do what's known as a join, which is basically when you connect queries from two tables on a common column's worth of information. So I'm going to do this again as a multi-line query for clarity, but you could do it a single line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select several columns from these different tables we've just looked at and join them together. So what I've done here, um, we're aliasing the processes table to P and the users table to U, just so we don't have to write everything out. And then in the select, we're saying for the processes table, select the PID column and the name. For the users table, select the username column. And then join them together on the UID column, which both tables have and hopefully should be corresponding. And again, we're going to limit this because otherwise it would return a lot of information. And hey, look, you've easily got the PID and the name of the service, and you've got the username of what it's currently running as. I'm going to take a moment here to talk about some of the OS query cell stuff because I want to show a couple commands, and I don't want to explain there, you know, without them coming out of nowhere. Uh, there are a bunch of dot commands. The most common is dot help. So if you do this, it shows you what the other dot commands are. Uh, that table shows you all the tables that are in OS query. So we've just looked at the user and processes table. Uh, we want to get maybe some more information about processes. So we want to see the other tables that have to do with processes. So I'm going to do dot tables process. And what this will do is this will basically pull up all the table names that have the word process in them. So hey, look, we have a bunch of other things that deal with processes. Process open sockets will show us what current listening sockets there are in a computer at a given point in time. Um, if you have any experience uh, looking at open network connections, you know that uh, there's a lot of sockets open on most modern computers at any given point in time, even if they're not doing a lot. Um, so let's look at this table a little bit. First off, I say there's a lot of them. Let's figure out how many. Four hundred and five. That's a fair bit. We're probably going to want to limit this query. See what this query contains as far as columns. Okay, we have a bunch of stuff here, um, but not superhuman readable. And also, we seem to be missing addresses, uh, since you'd normally think that process open sockets would be how your computer is talking on IP. Uh, well, the information is there. It's just not going to show up in the first couple of things. These are uh, local services that are just listening to local sockets on the machine, and they don't even have an IP address. So uh, let's refine this query a little bit to sort of see if we could find the information that we're looking for. Uh, so I'm going to up arrow to get the query back, one of the benefits of doing queries on a single line. 
and I'm going to say, let's see places where the remote address isn't empty. So I'm going to do where uh, remote address, which is one of the column names that we can see up here. And I'm going to say is less than or greater than empty. So in other words, something that's not empty. Hey, look, we're getting somewhere. And then let's say we want to look at stuff that is not just listening on uh, 000, something that's actually talking out to the internet. So we can add an and to our where clause. And uh, let's say um, remote address is bang equal to 0 .0 .0 .0. And close that. Uh, so here again, we're asking the open sockets to find us things where the remote address column is not empty, but it's also not zero 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 zero. And I unfortunately have typo. I apologize for that. Try it again. There we go. And so we're actually starting to see some things here. Um, but we're like, hmm. I would really like to know what these are. All I really got is a bunch of numbers in front of me. Well, here's where we can get really fancy and kind of combine everything together. So bear with me, this will take a little while, but we're gonna do another join with what we just did before, but also with the process open socket stuff. So to keep you from having to sit here all day watching me type out the next command, I've decided to do this one cooking show style. So let's look at what we're gonna do. From the users table, we're gonna take the username and UID. From the processes table, we're gonna take the process ID, the name, and the UID. And from process open sockets, we're gonna take all of the addresses and ports that we wanna see and the PID. The ones with asterisks next to them are the pieces that we're going to be joining together. And basically, here's what the whole thing looks like if I were to type it out, either as multi-line or as one single line. Um, so I'm going to basically go ahead and copy this instead of making you sit and watch while I type it. And I'm going to basically put it into OS Query, and we're going to get our results. So right now, we don't have a whole lot of stuff running, but we've basically narrowed it down from the 400 and some odd sockets that are currently listening to the ones that are actually talking remotely out of my machine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and launch a browser and good old Google and then come back and let's run this command again. And hey, you can now see that Firefox is running and Firefox is talking to a couple of remote ports as well. Um, so in this demonstration, you've basically seen uh, very simply how to launch OS Query, uh, how to do a couple of queries. Um, and how to start refining your queries and joining them together using SQL. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope that uh, you give me some feedback as to stuff you would like to see in the future. I plan on trying to do these fairly regularly, um, both expanding documentation for the OS Query community and our Uptix Union base. Um, as one closing thing, the dot command for getting out of OS Query is dot exit. Thanks again for listening, uh, and please find us at uptix.com or at uptix on Twitter. Thanks.